All right, so we have talked about the different states of matter and the changes they can undergo. So now we're going to start looking at properties of matter. A physical property is a characteristic of a substance that can be observed or measured without changing the substance's composition. And so we have some examples of those that you have listed there. All the different points, boiling point, melting point, freezing point, color, hardness, odor, mass, volume, etc., etc. Density is one that is also a physical property of matter. It's where you take the mass of the object divided by the volume of the object. And it'll give you a number, and that is its density. If, like, de water has a density of one, if something has a density less than one, it will float on water. If it's greater than one, it'll sink in water. Here's a little video snippet describing density a little more. Water has different properties. It does. So let's talk about that. So let's talk about density. All right, so what I've got right here is I have two different uh, uh, metal cylinders. The first one is made of uh, copper, and the, I think the second one is aluminum. It's like aluminum. And so um, what would you say about their volume? Well, it's just like the volume is about the same. Yeah, they're the same size yeah. in terms of volume. But um, if I hold them, one thing I can notice is that one is much heavier. So let me show you that okay. on the scale. So if I put the copper one on the scale, you can see it has a mass of 56 and some change grams. That's for grams. All right. And if I take the aluminum and put it on to the scale, he only weighs like 17, almost 18 uh, grams. A lot less mass for the same amount of volume. Yeah, so the, the same volume, if you were to have these in your hand, you would say, whoa, this one is really heavy. The copper one is heavy. The aluminum one is light. So that's a good illustration of density. It's with the mass divided by the volume. Solubility is how well a substance dissolves in water. Some substances dissolve very well in water, like Kool-Aid, for example, sugar, salt, etc. Oil, obviously, does not dissolve very well in water. Oil and water don't mix. So something that is very soluble dissolves easily. Something that is not, does not. Viscosity is a liquid's resistance to flowing. And here's another little video snippet to help explain that. Viscosity is a liquid's resistance to flowing. The lower the viscosity, the faster liquid will flow. The higher the viscosity, the slower it will flow. Water has a very low viscosity, so it flows very easily when poured from one beaker to another. Glycerin is a substance with a very high viscosity. As it pours from one beaker to another, it's flowing very slowly. This is very similar to substances like syrup or motor oil or ketchup things that move much more slowly when poured. Conductivity is a material's ability to allow heat or electricity to flow through it. Metals are good conductors, wood and plastics are not as good conductors. So like if you were, you know, when you're cooking on the stove, stirring something very hot, a wooden spoon is a better choice than a metal spoon because over a little period of time, that metal spoon will start to take on the heat of the substance you're stirring it in. Malleability is the ability of a solid to be hammered without shattering. You know, in the old days, blacksmiths, they would heat up iron and whatnot, and then you could pound it and it would bend and because it was very malleable at that temperature. Glass, obviously, if you hit it with a hammer, it shatters. Silly putty, uh, Play-Doh, those things are also very malleable. The pH scale tells us whether a substance is an acid, a base, or if it's neutral. You may remember this from ninth grade, but the pH scale goes from 0 to 14. 0 through 7 is what is considered acid. 7 exactly is neutral, and greater than 7, 7 to 14, is a base. And so you can see some different examples on that scale. Most things that we consume tend to be towards the acidic side cleaning products and stuff are on the basic side. Water is exactly neutral. We'll do a whole unit on acids and bases in the second semester, so we'll pay more attention to that later. Now, chemical properties, those describe the ability of a substance to react with another substance or to change from one substance to another. Examples of this, uh, flammability, 
you know, how are things able to burst into flame, burn in the presence of oxygen? Gasoline is very flammable. Alcohols are typically very flammable. Reactivity is how readily a substance combines chemically with other substances. Some things are very reactive, some things are not. You know, you might ask, well, what's going to happen if this and this mix together? Sometimes a big reaction, sometimes nothing. The noble gases like helium are what we call inert. They do not react. So different chemicals have different levels of reactivity. Now we're going to talk about some of the changes of matter, physical changes and chemical changes. A physical change of matter is changing that matter without altering its composition or changing its identity. If you take a piece of paper and tear it in half, you physically change it. It's still paper, it's just looking a little different. So some words that are describing physical changes. Boiling, freezing, melting, all of our phase changes of matter. Dissolving is a big one. People don't always remember, you know, when you dissolve something in water, it's still there. I could evaporate the water and get the substance back. So when you put sugar into water, it looks like it's gone, but it's actually just in the water and can be separated back out. Um, condensing, like I said, phase change. Break, split, oh, poor Katie and Russell. Crush, crack, tear, anything that just changes the physical identity of the substance but doesn't actually change itself. Chemical changes, on the other hand, do alter the composition of the substance. New substances, are, new substances are created with different properties. And so you've got brand new things coming from something or coming from something different. Like if you take that paper, if you burn paper, it's not paper anymore. It's a, a whole new substances with different properties. Some evidence that a chemical change has occurred the evolution of a gas, if you see bubbling, or oftentimes there might be an odor associated with that change. The formation of a precipitate. Uh, precipitates are pretty important. Uh, we're going to do a huge week-long investigation at the end of the first semester that involves a lot of reactions forming precipitates. That's where you mix solutions together and produce a solid. That solid is what we call the precipitate. Just like precipitation falls from the sky, rain and snow, a precipitate is a solid that comes out of these two liquids mixing. Here you see a white precipitate forming. Here you see a yellow precipitate forming when those two solutions mix. There can also be a release or absorption of energy, as we mentioned the other day, exothermic or endothermic. If there's a change in temperature or if you see light energy, and color changes. Things that change color have a different chemical identity. These chemical changes typically take place through a chemical reaction, and that's where you have one or more substances changed into new substances. Our reactants are what we call the starting substances. The products are what's produced, the new substances. And as we see there, throughout the year, we're going to see many, many different chemical changes. And a lot of these are reactions that are sustaining your life and are extremely important for you as a human being. But then again, just some of the chemical labs that we'll do, including on Friday, is an example of a chemical reaction. Some examples of these, though, you know, a battery is a little chemical factory. And once the chemical reaction is done, the batteries die. Obviously, breathing in oxygen, exhaling carbon dioxide, fruit and vegetables ripening, you know, going from unripe to ripe to then spoiled, that is a chemical change, chemical reaction. Spoiling milk, spoiled milk is a way different substance than non-spoiled milk. Digestion, cooking, taking ingredients and using heat to change their structures and whatnot to make them more palatable. Striking a match, ah, that lovely smell of sulfur when a, a match is lit. Making medicines, um, and then again, the decaying process, for example, you know, when ripening goes way too far. That is definitely a chemical reaction as well. Now here we're gonna take a little peek at this little demonstration. Um, I 
we'll probably do this for you in lab on Thursday, but I'm sure you've all seen what happens when baking soda and vinegar mix together. Well, the chemical name for vinegar is acetic acid, and the chemical name for baking soda is sodium bicarbonate. So when you mix these two things together, you get a lot of carbon dioxide gas, and then you left, you're left behind with some sodium acetate and water. So let's just take a quick peek at this reaction. So the vinegar is a clear liquid, the baking soda white powder, it goes in and there is bubbling everywhere, overflowing, and those carbon dioxide gas bubbles are leaving the container. Left behind then in the bottom, as I said, is some sodium acetate that is still dissolved into water. Now what you can't see in this video, which you can possibly see uh, or experience in the lab, would be the fact that the temperature is changing. When you mix baking soda and vinegar, it gets colder. It's a endothermic process. Heat is um, being absorbed and you, you get the sensation of the glass turning cold. Sorry about that, I thought the video was a little longer. But the glass would feel cold because it, it, there's an energy change taking place and there would also be an odor involved with that process. Now in that chemical reaction, you, the arrow is there to say changed into yields or reacts to produce. So the acetic acid and the sodium bicarbonate are changed into carbon dioxide, sodium acetate, and water or react to produce those things. That's what the arrow is for. And then, as I said, the evidence of the chemical change in that specific reaction, there was definitely bubbles, the evolution of a gas, and I said you could have experienced a temperature change and perhaps an odor had it been up close and personal. So this concludes these notes. Um, when we get into class on Thursday, we'll do some reviewing uh, through a little review game with the smart response clickers and then we will take a quiz on this so hopefully you understand the material and if you don't make sure you do come and talk with me and make sure that you have a grasp of that material have a great rest of your day